The 100-meter high Dome des Invalides rises up majestically close to the River Seine in the historical center of Paris. The Hotel des Invalides was built by King Louis XIV as a home for soldiers who had been wounded in action. Many of the soldiers were forced to become beggars, but the building provided them with a secure roof over their heads. Following completion of this first building, construction began on the equally impressive Dôme des Invalides. Since then, the Hôtel des Invalides has replaced its injured soldiers with a military exhibition. Today, part of the hotel contains one of the most important museums of military history in the world. Due to the splendid designs created by architect Liberal Bluon, these buildings are an impressive sight. The Hôtel des Invalides indicates the artistic taste of the French royal court in the late 17th century. Today, these buildings are not associated with Louis XIV, but with another leader, Napoleon Bonaparte. The aggressive nature of this self-proclaimed emperor almost manifests itself in the facade, even though it was constructed some years previously. Napoleon would most likely have approved the Musée de l'Armée, today's army museum. It contains around 40,000 exhibits, including a large number of valuable weapons and armor. The collection also comprises numerous objects that date from ancient times to the present day. Modesty was not something that was bestowed upon the former monarchs of France, who portrayed themselves in a glorious and omnipotent light. The Dôme des Invalides is an historic masterpiece created by architect Jules Adouin Monsard. Its magnificent cupola crowns a unique and noble gravesite. Within the cupola, paintings by Charles de la Fosse begin to shine in the natural light and highlight the solemn atmosphere within the church. This section of the building is dedicated to the most famous military leader in French history, Napoleon Bonaparte, his close family, and some of his most loyal military commanders. Ah. 
Almost 150 years after the completion of the Dome des Invalides, the private royal chapel was given a different function. Although the French Revolution had swept away the regime of the elite as well as its feudal system, some two years later a new leader rose to prominence. Napoleon Bonaparte himself could not have wished for a more splendid final resting place. In his last will, he stated that he wanted to be buried on the banks of the River Seine. But after his attempt to conquer Europe failed and Napoleon was in exile, a state funeral seemed to be out of the question. However, 19 years after his death, permission was duly granted to return his remains from St. Helena to French soil. On December the 15th, 1840, the grand funeral cortege finally reached the Dome des Invalides, the new resting place of the much-loved French Emperor. Following the tradition of the Egyptian pharaohs, Napoleon's remains were contained in seven coffins. Twelve great goddesses of victory who symbolized the French people surround his sarcophagus of Finnish Porphyr that lies within the crypt. The crypt was specially redesigned and embellished by famous architect Visconti in order that it would be suitable to house the once all-powerful Napoleon. The impressive dome of the church above the sarcophagus contains magnificent painted ceilings that depict scenes from the life of Louis Son. while the walls of the crypt are dedicated to Napoleon's political deeds. Completion of the imperial tomb took place in 1861, around 20 years after the arrival of Napoleon's remains. Napoleon Bonaparte, the most important leader in French history, has deservedly found a dignified final place of rest beneath the magnificent cupola of the Dome des Invalides.